Here to help us, Attorney Mark O'Mara. Thank you so much uh, for being with us, Mark. Now, even if the Supreme Court were to finalize this draft opinion, overruling Roe versus Wade, that doesn't mean that abortion is completely illegal across the country, correct? That's correct. No, it doesn't. What it does is it takes away the federal protection that gives a woman a right to seek an abortion. And what it does then is dump it back to the individual states, to the legislatures, to make the decision for their individual states. Of course, the concern then is that you're going to have a continued split between conservative, we'll call them states that ban abortion, and more liberal uh, women rights oriented states that allow it. So it's not going to change much as far as individual states, but it gets rid of the federal protection. And this is not just about Roe v. Wade. In fact, this is also uh, concerning the case in Mississippi, right, with the 15-week abortion ban? Yes. And most importantly, this was the court's decision to take on that case and to issue maybe this draft opinion, which in and of itself is strange that we're talking about a draft U.S. Supreme Court opinion. But um, yes, if it overturns that, then it's really going to give strength or a signal to those who are very conservative in the abortion area. Uh, 15 months or 15 weeks, the next might be six weeks, the might, next might be a total ban on abortion. Don't forget, that was not done by some of these states who would otherwise want to do it because of Roe v. Wade. Take away Roe, you take away any of the safeguards on restrictions of women's rights on abortion. Now, according to the document, uh, leaked to Politico, which is another issue of legality, Justice Alito reportedly saying, quote, it is time to heed the Constitution and return the issue of abortion to the people's elected representatives. Now, if this were to become a final decision, what would change at the state level? That each individual state can do whatever they want in restricting or protecting a woman's rights to abortion. So they do not have to worry about a federal government looking at Roe v. Wade coming in and saying you can't do that. So Mississippi, that law will be approved, meaning in Mississippi, 15 weeks and up, you cannot get an abortion. Other states, Texas was one where we it was challenged a while back. Any other state that comes up with even more restrictive abortion rights, seemingly once it passes the state legislature and gets signed by the governor, it is now law of the land. Now, already nearly half of the states in the U.S., you mentioned a couple of them there, Texas included, have or will have passed laws that will ban abortion. Others have very strict measures regulating abortion. Was this only a matter of time before we saw something like this from the Supreme Court? Well, we knew with the more conservative leaning court that they were going to consider it. They gave some signals over the past couple of years. Certainly the most recent appointees are very conservative and um, vocal before they were on the bench about their view on abortion. So, yeah, we you can tell that this was coming. Um, sad that it's coming the way it's coming only because the draft opinion itself has many problems with the way it was presented and what it's going to mean for the next several months before a final decision is made. But no, the writing was on the wall over the past few months. Now, in terms of this leak being unprecedented, what does this mean for the confidentiality involving the Supreme Court? You know, it's horrific, in my opinion, as sort of a constitutionalist and a great respect for the institution of the Supreme Court and all courts. The idea that now we are doing, you know, this almost social media review of what the Supreme Court is thinking, which is the way it comes across to me, really undermines the legitimacy potentially of the Supreme Court. Um, I, I, I just don't like the fact that we're now talking about what they may be talking about. And let's not forget draft opinions, though I don't think it's going to be in this case, draft opinions always change. Uh, Reference to 12 Angry Men, that old movie, you know, where they started out almost one way and ended up another. My thought is that this is going to be very close to the final draft, but it's very concerning that whoever let it out, maybe somebody who wanted to, you know, present on behalf of the conservative side to get it out there before the elections. It's just troubling that there was that type of violation of what the Supreme Court does and how they do it. Well, and, and we already have a lack of trust among voters in this process, uh, in, the, in the judicial process. What do you think the ramifications are here? Well, uh, it's horrible because I live in this world and it's very, very difficult when you start trying to convince people, juries, clients, other people, that we should have trust in the system, criminal justice system, the regular justice system. And when you have these type of, of violations, you're right, exactly. What it does is it undermines the legitimacy of 
that court and, and the court processes that we have to rely on in order to maintain our democracy. Mark Amara, thank you so much for being with us, especially on such a major story. Thank you again. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.